This recording is an extract from the documentaries, Behind Secrecy and the Brain State, Introduction of the Science of Cybernetics, or Call it for Political Brain Technology, Mind Control or the Modern Methods of Brain Research. This documentary challenged our so-called democratic society. All statements made are also documented by the best facts. As extra information, it gives to the term, cyber, and how it originated. The man behind it was an American professor, rebel, threatened the military's power and died of an heart attack in Stockholm, Sweden, during a lecture at the Royal Scientific Academy. Cybernetics and our brains is what this documentary will address. Already in the title Cybernetics, and the human use of human beings, he warned of the misuse, that the new science would come in the wrong hands and that those with already too much power, would got more. Ten years later, when the misuse was obvious, he did reduce his scientific work, and started to travel around the world to remind the scientists about the danger of the development. In the United States, Europe, Asia and probably all around the world, the abuse of patients went on at a large scale at hospitals, the first experiments with computerized remote control was done 1942 indicates in cybernetics, but it wasn't just experiments with the brain, but a technology with resources to change its functions were all from blindness to madness, emotions, opinions and neurological functions could be modified. Although what still is unknown, by most people, had been introduced, 85 years ago to be used for political purposes, this was something Professor Just Miral raised in this book published in 1956, in that he gave clear words that both the Soviet and, Hitler's Germany used electrodes against enemies at various times during the 1930s, he said that if the public did not become aware of the threat, they would be an easy prey for the wolves in the forest, something that has come true. New York Times called it one of the most important books of the 20th century and said it was necessary to know cybernetics for anyone who wanted to understand our civilization. This has become more true for every decade since then, and is now essential to have any chance to understand what goes on in the world and why it happens. Professor Norbert Wiener wasn't just a scientist but also a brain activist against those with already too much power. In the spring of 1964, Norbert Wiener, the founder of our technological civilization, reached Stockholm, Sweden, to give a lecture at the Scientific Academy. It was in this building. He held his speech to the leading Swedish professors. It was on the afternoon at the 18th of March, 1964. The previous day he had delivered the same message at a lecture at Trondheims University in Norway. Science is a way of life which can only flourish when men are free to have faith. A faith which we flow upon orders imposed from outside is no faith. And a community which puts its dependence upon such a pseudo-faith is ultimately bound to ruin itself. It may also be used to destroy humanity, and if it is not used intelligently it can go very far in that direction. But here in Stockholm all ended, in the middle of his speech, he got a heart attack and died. It was like this he left the Swedish Academy of Science. From the 1960s it was common to connect people's brain processes to supercomputers by implants. We were subjected to the abuse often during ordinary operations, but also as inmates at other state institutions like police custody, prisons and psychiatric clinics. What follows are some example of what happened half a century ago, when the Swedish State Report 1972-47, from the Department of Justice wrote that they could see an inhuman police state at the horizon by this techno-political development. This transmitter looking like a bullet was inserted through the nostrils, during an ordinary operation in Stockholm, Sweden in the 1960s. Those electrodes were implanted into a woman at a Stockholm mental hospital in the early 1970s. At this X-ray there are three transmitters implanted. One has been pushed into the frontal brain and destroyed important areas, something we will see is very common of those implanted at Stockholm Police Custody. These were implanted between 1970 to 1975. This is the first implantation we can show on X-ray. The abuse took place at Karolinska Hospital in Stockholm 1946. This implant from Michigan's university is from 1990 and can be injected into the brain. The same method, 
being able to insert electrodes through the skull base, had started already in the 1950s. To connect animals' brains and biological life to research computers, had started with all life forms in 1950s. And here we see a dolphin fed with a radio fish. You're an alligator going to serve the researchers with an implant. An extra shell acts as a transmitter and radiates the beetle, establishing the connection to the big research computers. From this ad in the Times of India we can see that the research institution, going to buy a behavior system for animals, in this case, the holy cows in New Delhi. This picture illustrates that implants with nuclear energy are implanted in people. The first research report which tells about it is from the late 1960s. At this x-ray a mushroom transmitter is placed in a branded area in the frontal brain. It was an action between the CIA and the Swedish secret police when the silenced a threat, a Swedish man, and all took place at St. Carolus Hospital in Jakarta, Indonesia. Here is the area at the forehead CIA opened and branded the brain and placed a high-frequency transmitter in the wound. This is how the transmitter looks when shadows and other obscurities are removed. Here he is the day before the CIA action. And here he is the day after. It was a state rapist working behind the scene, and his activities was organized by the military research department, secret police and performed by surgeons, psychiatrists and others. In the 1970s, New York Times got this information by the Freedom of Information Act, and in that document, it was told that Soviet had no technologies related to brainwashing or mind conditioning that were not developed in the West. It was declared that a new system were under progress in Soviet 60 years ago. The people in Moscow, or anywhere else in Soviet Union, had no idea what were going on of interference in their brain functions. And it was just the same totalitarian threat in all Western nations where the state rape went on. When the Times, London, in March, 1999, published an obituary of the deceased Sidney Gottlieb, chief biologist of the CIA's MKUltra, they compared him to the Nazi doctors in the concentration camps and associated MKUltra to what had made our world darker. But it was not Gottlieb as a biologist, but more CIA the word should be directed to. The brain project had started before Gottlieb, and continue after his retirement 1973. In fact, Britain had the same research and development of cybernetics which was directed by MI5, MI6, and other institutions. We had the same projects in Sweden, also our own Dr. Sidney Gottlieb. He was like his U.S. colleague director for the institution that developed the brain experiments as a techno-political idea. His name was Bori Beck, general, biologist and neuroprofessor, chief of the Swedish Defense Research and directed the brain and mind research from 1985. After leaving his duty, he took the job at home and here was the office of Bori Beck Brain Research until 2019 when he died. Here is a member of the British Parliament contacting the Prime Minister in this matter but tells the parliament has no power in relation to MI5 activities. All this was a part of a new war between the state and its people in which the generals were still military, while many professors and medical institutions were the soldiers, in a battle against unwitting humans. CIA had a global project called for MK Ultra established 1953 and they had a cooperation with hospitals around the world, among these, Gorstad's Mental Hospital in Oslo, Norway, already from 1956, seems all patients, without them knowing of it, had electrodes in their brains. That cooperation was arranged by the Ford Foundation between CIA, Pentagon and the Norwegian state and its chief doctor, Professor Carl Sand Jacobson. The CIA and its inhumanity can be understood from the grave at Rees Cemetery in Oslo, Norway. It is a mass grave where between 50 to 100 mental patients from Gausted Mental Hospital in Oslo are buried. From the beginning, it was a deep pit where, during the years 1960 to 1990, dead bodies were dumped from the nearby Gausted Mental Hospital. 
they had died as a consequence of a torture when they were exposed to stimulation of the brain's pain center. That international AI project was part of CIA's MKUltra and Pentagon's brain research as can be seen from the Norwegian State Report, 2003-33. Every year on May 7, there is a memorial service for the murdered patients, at Rees Church. Here is a medical doctor, testifying for an bioethical commission in U.S. Dr. John Hall. Uh, in reviewing the common rule, uh, it's very obvious that there's a lot of loopholes to inform consent. All of the horrific experiments you've mentioned, uh, Willowbrook, MK Ultra, radiation experiments, mostly were done without informed consent. In the community, we are seeing an alarming rate of complaints of use of electromagnetic weapons, which has taken the lab out of the laboratory and into the home. Most of these, from the research that we reviewed, can be done remotely. The brain technology and behavior modification was something the Swedish minister, Alva Murdal, had treated already 1972 in a state report. Undoubtedly, the protection of the individual against an abuse of these and similar methods in today's society is insufficient. The same year, 1972, when Alva Murdal in a state report, to choose future, warned of the brain technology. The Swedish secret police had started to put inmates at Stockholm police custody to sleep and implant transmitters into their heads and brains. The first professor who disclosed it was the Swedish-American Petter Lindström, followed by several more doctors and Swedish state officials. That was something the German journalist and rebel Ulrike Meinhof became a victim of. The German secret police, BND, implanted her, 1972 as soon as she was arrested and placed in the Kelowna Sandorf prison and they were also behind the torture that followed. The story started a couple of years before, as a demonstration against Germany's involvement in the Vietnam War, and to protest against the bombings in Vietnam. They formed a group that blew up the US supercomputer in Heidelberg which programmed the bombings in Vietnam. To get money for their activities they robbed banks and it became to be the ever greatest police raid in European history and they were called for criminals, murderers and terrorists. When Ulrika was implanted and the terror started, she wrote to her lawyer, Klaus Quasson, and gave the best explanation any victim of the brain torture done. The letter which is an official state document was quoted in Udadit Word's biography of Ulrika and this abbreviated text from her letter gives a picture of her situation. The same as many people now are exploited of in both Germany, Sweden and worldwide. The feeling that you constantly imperceptibly are subjected to electrical currents, as you were remote controlled. The feeling that your head explodes. The feeling that the skull would burst, crack. The feeling that the brain gradually shrivels together as dried fruit. The feeling that one pisses the soul from the body. One does not know if shaking coming from fever or cold. Not know why shaking, freezing come. One can no longer identify the meaning of words. Only guess. The feeling of burning inside. Furious aggression as there is no ventilation for. The feeling that time is running away, that the brain expands and the feeling that the skin is drawn off your body. This movie makes several revelations similar to what is addressed in this recording. In the Senate hearings 1977 of the behavior experiments it was told that they gave many tragedies. The general director of the CIA, Stansfield Turner testified that he just knew fragments of what was going on in this secret field. We are not professing to tell you the complete story of these activities. Yeah. We are professing to tell you the complete story that we know. Right. But these records that we've uncovered yeah. don't tell the story. They tell pieces of it. Professor Harold Leitenberg published the book of behavior modification in the middle of the 1970s and Dr. Leonard Krasner was one of several professionals who participated with texts. This one from his chapter is an excerpt of that. The issues in this field involve concepts of freedom, justice, the nature of man and science, human rights, and other abstract but real ideas and ideals. I once expressed that since behavior modification had arrived on the scene, we must do something before it is too late. This is a task that is ever growing more difficult. This issue involves philosophical, social, political, and religious values as to the meaning and purpose of scientific inquiry and of life itself. The only thing new at this point is that suddenly a group of individuals, self-identified as behaviorists, contend that they have the secret to changing, controlling, 
influencing and manipulating human behavior. When you are connected to the supercomputer, the controllers can realize your thoughts, see with your eyes, hear, smell and feel exactly as you do yourself, all your biology, mentality, emotions, psychic reactions and cognitive functions are compiled in the supercomputer. The U.S. Department of Defense told in a report entitled, Information Operations, of August 1996. The implanted microscopic brain chip links the individual to the human computer system, creating a seamless interface between the user and the information resources. By exploiting the human cognitive process, the information can be tailored to present precisely what is needed. They can even infringe in your genes and U.S. state reports tells of the possibility to use the resources to build up a genetic control system by these methods. The U.S. Department of Health wrote in its Institutional Review Board Guidebook of 1993. Vigorous ethical debates about these studies arise out of the fear that scientific data may be used to justify social stratification and prejudice, or that certain groups will appear to be genetically inferior. The supercomputers are like permanent memory stations and store all information of any person during all the lifetime and, as Swedish and U.S. state documents affirm, make it possible to go back into a person's childhood and compare, to what he is as matured. Even to realize what experiences that made one to become to be the individual he is. The Swedish State Investigation, 1987-31 told about that. There are a large number of research projects in which information about a person from different times needs to be put together. This can, for instance, mean studying the significance of childhood and adolescence for a person's adult life. And cybernetics was also the first science by which all perceived, even could be manipulated, regardless if it is thoughts, emotions, memory, mentality or cognitive functions. Even people's willpower can be transformed, as the EU Commission's ethical board stated in its declaration of 2005. All of these resources are what almost all media, politicians and the public is unaware of, and what our societies are victimized by, a weapon the hidden power got to rule us, and to enter a technocratic system where unseen elites, invisible are ruling all and everyone. To see the best facts is also to look into the Swedish military program of mind brain and behavior control. Here is the Swedish Defense Research Institution's agenda of activities of 2010, and here in translation. Some factors coincided that their most secret program became published on internet but was removed when the mistake was realized. They state that we all are going to be used in the human system interaction, for all our lifetime and that the central program is to exploit our cognitive functions. Like a COVID virus and being spread in the air, that's how the new materials are produced. This is another text from the Swedish Military Research, 2005, 15 years ago, and they talk about a change of our biology. Micro-robots smaller than a 1,000 mm are going to enter our blood and going to be able to communicate with our brains. This is made with a social and political context and can be described as a crime against humanity. This lecture at the Modern War Institute, give an idea what USA military research DARPA, have as the source of modern warfare. This can also be seen from documents of Defense Department, that they by the brain systems will be able to direct anyone anywhere to any level. What we're here to talk about today is the fact that the brain is and will be the 21st century battlescape in many ways. End of story. Out of disclosure, some of the work that I'm doing here today is funded by the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories. I'm also funded by the European Union Human Brain Project, specifically the Subproject 12, where I'm a task leader for dual-use brain science. And I've also done some ongoing work with the Strategic Multi-Level Assessment Crew over the past 10 years at the Pentagon, at Dr. Kabayan's group, and with DARPA. To see it in the most correct view, it is a rape, not less damaging people and society than other kind of rapes and violences. People are behavior manipulated and this is made in a social and political context. These words are no exaggeration or misunderstanding but the accurate way to see implants in our heads and brains. This table of radio frequencies indicate what radio waves that enter the brain of U.S. citizens after hospital stay, when implanted. It was published in the thesis, Telemetry is Coming of Age, 1980, by Professor Stuart Mackay and Dean Jutter. We are on a train ride, call it for world development very few know about. 
and the destination is completely unknown for most people. No one have ever heard the name of the stations on that journey. Now the military went to war, but against the people of their own country and with a weapon no one were meant to know about. They organized themselves internationally and set up defense forces that nothing would be revealed. They marched into our brains to change behavior and social development. The security services became their allies and partnerships were established with doctors and hospitals that implanted transmitters in people's heads and brains. When these state activities became routines, to implant the people for medical research, behavior manipulation and brain experiments, the state has become a rapist and our governments are criminal organizations. People have no idea what the most important use of AI is about. It has been developed for 70 years and changed our society badly, because it is in the wrong hands, military power, police brutality, capitalistic interests, and seeing humans as components, to exploit and use us as tools for the new technology. This is the source of AI, supercomputers are what we call for, the cloud, and gave birth to the digital age. The following pictures of Senator John Glenn illustrates what he mentioned 1994 and 1997 in the Senate, and the words are valid for any other country. There were many protests and one of the best came 2005 from the EU Commission's Ethical Board with the Swedish professor Joran Hermirin as chairman. They published the 30-page, Ethical Aspects of ICT Implants in the Human Body, and wrote about the threat to our security, our health and asked how far we should accept to be implanted. What Professor Gretz revealed in his book of declarations at a research conference of disease and deadly creating experiments took place at every area of research. In 1986, 20th of March, a conference was held at the Department of Justice in Stockholm, which was recorded in this report. It was told that Scandinavian citizens have less protection to their lives and research, than other nations. This makes researchers from all over the world come here to conduct their experiments on people they are not entitled in their own countries. The professor who revealed it, Robert Erickson, said, it has the advantage for us in Sweden that we get a stream of highly competent and qualified researchers, who in a significant way contribute to and develop Swedish social research. From that point of view, we live in the best of worlds. In addition, the state report discloses that they selling people, in one or another form, and it brings huge amounts. It is called criminal in other government reports and is similar to any other illegal business. The Swedish Minister of Justice, Sten Wickboom, hosted the conference. It was Sven Lundqvist, the general director for the National Archives, who revealed that they could make money out of people. He said, I would also sell if I got 58 million crowns as has been the amount last years. Now I don't have that information, but I think it should be clear in this discussion that there is a difference in things. What he meant was that crime and rape was different depending who made them. It is a new kind of slave trade and can be seen as antisocial as any other violence, crime or rape. In today's value it is about $20 million they get each time of recurring black money, which of course also falls into the pockets of professors. What they sell are rape people, victims of the brain technology. This crime is even more devastating than what all bank robbers and violent offenders execute. The same was told at the Swedish Department of Justice in Stockholm. Professor Peter Westerholm expressed in his speech, at a conference on the brain technology, March 20, 1986. Basically, this is a political process. It is an interaction between the citizens and the institutions that society has built up, namely research institutions or supervisory authorities. We have three categories in this. First, the ones that make the research, it's we the scientists. Then we have the ones on which the research is carried out. It is the subjects or the citizens. Then we have the third group, which we can call the gatekeepers, those who make sure it is built up barriers on the road so that it does not goes out of control. 
The third category Professor Westerholm mentioned is the gatekeepers are in Sweden and many countries, the Board of Health and Welfare, as together with psychiatrists declare all victims, they who insist they are used for the experiments, as mentally sick. This has for long time been a method to hide the criminal project away from media and public knowledge. The EU Council underlined special caution of ICT implants that as they wrote, determine or change psychic functions. ICT implants that influence the nervous system and particularly the brain and thus human identity as a species as well as individual subjectivity and autonomy. The EU Commission's Ethical Board wrote, Individuals are manipulated with various electronic components, under skin chips and smart tags. Researchers' freedom may conflict with safeguarding the health of research subjects. The unlimited freedom of some may threaten the health and safety of others. The leading chief at UN, Nils Melzer, in Geneva, declared at this session in 2020, that the brain technology also include torture of people. The UN flag on a half pole can symbolize this development. My name is Niels Meltzer. I'm the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Torture. Torture is ugly. It stinks of blood, of vomit, of excrement and sweat. And the scandal is, it is being practiced throughout the world with impunity. At the Human Rights Council's 43rd session between 24 February to the 20th of March 2020 in Geneva, Professor Nils Melzer declared that mind control technology was part of an issue where torture and grave health risks are generated, like the times he compared it to what happened in the concentration camps. The use of ICT implants in order to have remote control over the will of people should be strictly prohibited. This was told by the EU Council in their document of implants. Here is the historian Yuval Harari looking at the issue of brain tech and algorithms to hacking people. Biological knowledge multiplied by computing power multiplied by data equals the ability to hack humans. To create an algorithm that understands me better than I understand myself and can therefore manipulate me, enhance me or replace me. There are four source material compiled. One is New York Times which in extract includes their best 100 articles on the brain issue, at 150 pages. The second is The Brain Wall which consists of the 33 most well-known books in essence, 250 pages. Third is Frankenstein, as integrate 33 scientific research reports of remote control of the brain and excerpt, about 200 pages. And the fourth is documents which comprise political statements. Professors' declarations, defense research reports and some translated Swedish state investigations in summary, 200 pages. Also the Swedish, Jerntexter, 150 pages extracts from research reports, state documents and similar facts. In addition there are about 100 shorter or longer articles in Swedish and English between 2 to 50 pages, plus some cartoons, like The Phantom, and the poster book Counter-Attack. 50 pages as well as Swedish poster book on 100 pages, Slag at Vid Brainpoint, Translation, The Battle at Brainpoint. We must take the words of the EU Council to our hearts and realize that there is a brain issue that needs to be brought to public knowledge and debate if we want to be human beings in the future. Now, the two main factors of human life, the genes and the brain are under attack by a new military weapon. Something which is injected into our bodies and brains, without our knowledge. New York Times understood this in humanity already 50 years ago. In this editorial of September 19, 1970, 50 years ago, they warned of the reality which now been realized in many countries. They wrote, a newborn baby's first experience would be neurosurgery, an operation in which the child's brain was fitted with miniaturized radio devices connected to every major center controlling reason and emotion. Children in such society might be raised as flesh and blood electrical toys, whose ideas and behavior were directed by computer signals. Any aberrant or heretical ideas would be transmitted to the computer, 
which would be programmed to take appropriate action to restore control. Are the newborn going to be injected with electrodes and chips into their brains? What the New York Times warned of 50 years ago is today's reality. That's what some anonymous hidden groups has taken the rights to implement in US, Sweden, within EU, and the same goes on worldwide. We are on our way to become experimental components of militant extremists within the state, and this goes on internationally. This illegal project can be classified as a terrorist act, to cause destruction to the democratic state, its functions, representatives and ultimately expose people to harm, suffering, as to restrict the population's right to their own lives, independence and freedom, it is based on placing the inhabitants under brain, mind and behavior control, to introduce implants into the human body and brain, exploiting human beings and medical research, behavioral technology and brain experiments, now Dr. Frankenstein has reincarnated. From the professors, Nils Melzer, Joran Hermarin, Ulrika Meinhof and others. We can also understand that a new, neuroelectronic torture been introduced. To put a population into these circumstances, is to remove freedom, self-determination, human rights, democracy and all forms of humanity. Vi är inlämnade i en teknopolitisk utveckling, likvärdig med de mest skrämmande spökhistorier där Dr. Frankenstein intagit samhällsutvecklingen och våra hjärnor. Det har skett helt bortom medias, de flesta politikers och därmed allmänhetens kännedom. Ämnet innefattar ett tvång mer totalitärt än vad någon diktator någonsin haft till makt över sin befolkning. Vi förlorar rätten till våra egna hjärnor att få vara de människor vi vill och leva med de värderingar vi önskar ha till våra egna. Alternativt kan vi erövra tillämpningarna för mänskliga ändamål, vår egen hälsa, den egna klokheten, utnyttja cybernetiken till att utveckla mänsklighet istället för att avveckla den, att ha större möjligheter att lösa de eviga samhällsproblemen. Ifall vi börjar här med oss själva och våra egna hjärnor, då har vi tagit ett stort steg på vägen till att skapa en trovärdig framtid. No topic is more important to open up for publicity, everyone's knowledge, change and a debate in the parliament. It is about a deeper intrusion in our lives than we ever have heard of. It change our society from something honest to become a lie. It makes free people to become slaves, losing freedom, even self-determination to their own brains and shape us to become something else than what we want. At the same time society is locked in behind a modernistic digital barbed wire fence. Although this documentary first of all is addressed to the people, to social activists, to media in general, it has a special dedication to Swedish authorities, the parliament and government, and the same message is obvious to all other nations with the same techno-political development. People are of course not going to be forced to live with electrodes and chips in their brains. Newborns are of course not going to have their first meeting with life, to be raped by the state where they are born. Pregnant women should of course not be enforced to risk their babies, being born with genetic and brain damage, because of perverted medical research and state power. This is the crossroads where we have to take back what's been lost and open up a new time where cybernetics can give us as much good as evil has threatened us. <laughs>